who will make his first start as a Jet against MP on Prime Video. Al Michaels with Kirk Herbstreit, Kaylee Hart, I'm Aaron Rodgers, Torres Achilles. So here we are, the team is four and six, Zach Wilson and Tim Boyle. So tell me, it begs the question, how does a team average can you if there's a chance? <laughs> well, I think the big thing is, Al, that, that Boyle comes in not to special teams and turnover margin, doesn't have to be pretty, but just be a free team in the league. They're like a track meet, speed everywhere on offense. The defense seems to be speed. The quarterback right now, Tua Tagovailoa, executing at MVP level. And I think in. So let's have a blast. It's the Jets and the Dolphins on this Black Friday. Football in Espanol to the field. We go. And the best receivers of all time. He was coming off of a 1700. He thought this offseason 2000. That was the mark he's goal. Now 10 games in, he is on pace to do both. And he is, when he tries to catch a football, that hand is still swollen. And yet, he does not. A lot of fun to watch, hurt his hand last week, but none the worse for wear. There are the standing four and six. So, not, it's never do or die, really. Miami won the toss, they've deferred. G for New York. And off we go on Black Friday from the middle. Went to Connecticut for three years, college football, then went to Eastern Kentucky for one. Three games when Jared Goff got hurt. Went to Chicago at the end of last year. And he goes, no back change and all of that. He says, hey, maybe he's the next Kurt Warner. They can only pray. <laughs> Hold the ball. One of the problems with Zach Wilson is he held the ball too long. A lot of sacks, a lot of tense against Dolphins defense. So the Jets now back up quarterbacks on the sideline. Rising and hops back to the defensive huddle. Third down. So for, for Tim Boyle tonight, it's again. And two, they go no huddle here. And you've got a flag and a free play. Showing that experience with Aaron Rodgers. You know, they used that hard count at a, at a great time. Green Bay, three years. Two of those with Nathaniel Hackett, who's his offensive coordinator. Defense, number 92. That five yard penalty results in a scheme. That, that's the thing that I think will be different to fans watching is blowingly of his time with Rodgers. Play action. Pass. So for Boyle, there they are in Green Bay. You know, we told you before it went to Connecticut. And his statistics in college. Brees Hall is the running back, and he gets corralled behind the line of scrimmage. Jalen Phillips, number 15, is right there. The Dolphin defense which, of course, was paling in comparison to the offense early in the season, but now really starting to come on. Yeah, Vic Fangio, one thing you always think about is having great outside linebackers, and he's got Chubb on one side and, and Phillips on the other, and we always equate great outside backers in this scheme with their ability to rush the quarterback, but Vic Fangio quickly to point out how good these guys are at setting that edge, and great example there by Phillips. So five wide, including Dalvin Cook, who is in the game. Four-man rush, both throws caught up at the 40-yard line, but well shy on the first down. Garrett Wilson making the catch there. So they picked up a first down off the penalty and now have to punt. Keep in mind, we're going to talk so much about Boyle, but Robert, Robert saw also talking to us on the field before the game. This offensive line, it's, and we'll talk more about it, it, it has been uh, you know, a revolving door, having their eighth different offensive line combination today so when they get in third and long they're in big trouble protecting the quarterback thomas morstead 14th here in the league most of those with the saints early on braxton barrios to run it back fair catch called for made 15 yard line and that's where the miami dolphins will start their first drive with Tua tonga bailoa coming out in on the area there Zach Wilson losing his job at least for the moment and Aaron Rodgers meanwhile from the 15 yard line Miami begins this drive with a most run he goes nowhere and right there Quinnen Williams number 95 taking him down for a loss and now you got some action on the field and you got flags all over the place uh, with this offensive line moving around some new pieces After the play up was front. over Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 70. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced in the previous spot. Automatic, first down. Yeah, the flags were flying. Quentin Jefferson flagged. 
Well, this Jets defense came out even Correction. when we were at the break. The penalty was a dead ball foul, so it was enforced from the end of the run. First down. Yeah, they, they, they're bouncing around, showing a lot of energy, and then they make a big play with Quentin Williams, and then all that is taken away because of a dead ball foul right here after the whistle with Jefferson. I mean, that was, I think the timing of that is when it was called, well after the whistle. Sometimes we see that and we think, eh, that wasn't that bad, but I think if you realized how late it came, it caught the attention of the official. The enforcement of the penalty was after the play was over. Therefore, we're going to enforce it from the 11-yard line to the 26, and it's an automatic first down. And Robert Salad just took Jefferson out of the game and replaces him with Solomon Thomas. Yeah, that, the, the intent there with the headbutt, you just, you, know, you got a lot of energy here early, pinned them back inside of 20 to 15. That's a big deal for this defense. You know, they, they want three and outs, and they want to give their offense great field position, so they make a mental error here on the first play. Play action. Found by Loa, the only left-handed starting quarterback in the league. It's dropped, and then we covered at the 32-yard line. Mostert is there. Had it, dropped it, recovered it. Ashton Davis covering on the play. Gain of five. Really good job by Davis there in coverage, and, and even a better job by the, the defense forcing Tua to have to work back all the way to his third option. That ball is out. It's a live ball. Miami fortunate to get back on it. They're going to take, uh, they're actually going to challenge this out. Well, okay. Hussey goes over to check with Salah. The New York Jets are challenging the ruling on the field of a completed catch. Time so out. That challenge comes less than four minutes into the game. Take another look. Did he control it? Did he not? Terry McCauley indicates uh, in it's ruled that Mostert at two feet that didn't take a move after that. So they do, the Jets do win the challenge. And it makes it second down and 10 instead of second down and five. And Kirk, you know, you make a challenge like that early on on a relatively inconsequential play. And, you know, you wonder, does it come back, especially if you lose it, then you're only down to one. You don't see too many you early challenges No, you like don't that. see that often, but I think it shows you the confidence in how much they knew that this was going to be reversed. And also, they get Tua behind the sticks by getting that incompletion. But now Hill has it. And Hill is out of bounds after a couple. Let's take a look at some of uh, the Tonga Bailoa statistics this year, and they are great. 70%, almost 3,000 yards, two and a half to one touchdown to interception ratio. 21 touchdowns, third in the NFL. And you think back to last year, those two serious concussions. He even thought about, well, maybe it's time to retire, but here he is coming back and playing great. Third and eight. Down the sideline. Guess who's out in front? And a saving tackle at the end of the play. And hopping away is Hill. He makes the grab. He went to the ground. He gets tripped up by D.J. Reed to save a touchdown in all likelihood. But now after a 36-yard gain, Hill comes hopping off. He came out of last week's game with a hand injury for a while, got back in, and now this. Yeah, third down and long. You're going to put corners on islands. D.J. Reed is very good, but you're talking about one of one with, with Tyreek Hill and staying with him on that slot fade. Fortunate just to catch up with him and bring him down. So Hill on the sideline. Line of scrimmage is the 37. And this is Waddle. And what a one-two punch that is. Hill and Waddle. Jordan Whitehead is right there. And Hill in some pain on the Dolphins bench. He got he got behind coverage. A great throw. The timing amazing. And this gets caught there as he was coming down with Reed making that tackle from behind but how about how they stretch you not just vertically they stretch you horizontally the pre-snap movement puts so much on the eyes of the defense especially the linebackers and safeties 
Lead the league in scoring, lead the league in yards per game. And that's incomplete, that pass off the hands of Durham Smythe, the tight end, to make it third down and two at the Jets' 29-yard line. Yeah, and the equalizer tonight for this defense is has got to be the defensive front, which is obviously a strength with Quentin Williams and Jermaine Johnson, John Franklin Myers. They can get pressure without having to bring the blitz. And those guys are going to have to dominate against the Miami offense. It's beat up as far as the interior. Connor Williams is fine at center, but you got a couple backups playing Eichenberg on that right guard and Lester Cotton, the same lineup they used last week in their game. Guess who's back? That didn't take long. Shot out one play, third down and two now. And First church timeout, time Miami. Out. This time will out be taken here by time Mike out. McDaniel and the Dolphins, and we go to Kaylee. Tyreek Hill got a quick exam of his left foot while he was on the sidelines. They spatted him up and he ran right back out there. But guys, he was on the injury report week 11 because of that foot. I'll say a quick exam. That was like going to urgent care, drive through. Well, well he uh, he is so motivated, not just individually, because he, this guy, he's on pace to go over 2,000 yards as a receiver, which we've never seen. Obviously, Calvin Johnson had a magical year came close for the 16 games but he's not a selfish guy I, we how many times have we heard from miami folks about how hard he works in practice what a great teammate he is how much he energizes everybody with his approach on a day-to-day -day basis well, of course he came over from kansas city great amount of success there obviously and then the trade and loving it in south beach third and two Here's Hill, first down, lots more. Bounces off a couple of tackles, takes it to about the 10 yard line, tackled there by DJ Reed. And you got Alec Ingold leading the way with a nice block. Now you know it's coming. You just don't know is he get a jet motion all the way across. I mean, Reed is out his second time. He's out here by himself. Now he's got to respond to this. Now he's got momentum. And instead of continuing across the field, he catches that quick throw. And look at the convoy he's got in front of him. I mean, it's tough enough to tackle this guy in space. Now you get him in space and look at these linemen out in front, athletic, and helping him almost get to the end zone. Drive started at its own 15 for Miami at the 12, now first and 10. Hill this time in the slot, fake it to him, toss it to Mostert, and stays in bounds for three or four yards. Second down. And they just stay one step ahead of you with the execution. And a lot of people talk about the speed, and, and you should. But I think Tua Tungabaloa has taken a different step in his second year with Mike McDaniel and the execution of this offense, the things that he does pre-snap. There's so much movement and how he is in command and how comfortable he is with what he's seeing from the defenses. He and Mike McDaniel work very, very well together and allow him to really orchestrate this offense. It's, it's really, it's kind of, it's a match made in heaven the way yep. it looks right now. Yep. Second down and four. Toss here, slips to the outside, breaking a tackle, picks up a bit, about one. Mostert broke away from Quincy Williams. Mostert in his ninth year in the league, and you know, you're talking about speed, guys in their ninth year in the league normally aren't what they were in the combine, but this guy is still as fast as he ever was. Yeah, you go back and you look at his career, his first five years, he, he was just trying to make a roster. He's a lot of, lot of practice squad moments, and you think that the guy's not going to be able to do much, but look at his numbers now. I mean, He's averaging 5.2 yards a carry. I think he says it all. A great compliment to what they do on the perimeter. 11 rushing TDs, 13 TDs total. Third and three. Two in the pocket, has time. Comes out the back door, keeps it himself, and gets upended by Whitehead inside the five yard line. So now you have fourth and two. And we'll see about McDaniel's call here. A man, these, these two guys were on the same staff in San Francisco. McDaniel, offensive pedigree. Sal, of course, the defensive pedigree. Leave the offense in here, right here. Who wins? Fourth and two. Hill split out. Now he comes back inside a little bit. Going that way. Can Hill pull it in? He cannot. 
Sauce Gardner covering on the play. So there is a big time matchup. The great receiver, the great corner, and the Jets win that many battles to keep it scoreless with six and a half to go 